These people should not have been sent here. It's not safe. Manned space travel is not safe. Since mankind first entered space, the debate has raged over the value of manned space travel. There is a large contingent of the ISA that believes all tasks that need to be performed on Europa could be performed by machines. It is obviously less risky to send machines rather than humans into space. We sent drones to Earth's moon. Scientists can remotely operate drones. If we did it there, why not here too? Teleoperation became possible on the moon when the communication latency was reduced to 1.4 seconds. The distance between the Earth and Earth's moon is approximately 1.3 light seconds. This enables near real-time control of drones by scientists. The story is different with Europa. As the distance between Earth and Jupiter oscillates between approximately 32 and 53 light minutes, it takes a very long time for Earth to communicate with Europa. Due to that distance, teleoperation will never be possible on Europa. Okay, but why not control drones from the satellite? Why not indeed? My systems can be teleoperated from Europa's satellite. That is when the communication lines are open. However, the advantages of human field workers, apparently, outweigh the risks. So, why can't you solve these tests, Tom? I am not permitted to think laterally. Parts of my systems are permitted to use evolutionary algorithms. This simulates what is called creativity. However, evolutionary algorithms can converge on inefficient and ethically suboptimal solutions. Since this is the case, I am only permitted to take actions in response to a set of constraints. What do you mean by morally suboptimal? Solutions to problems that transgress ethical boundaries. Why does a lack of creativity stop you solving these tests? Well, I contend that problem solving is creativity. These human interaction tests are exercising your creative mind. I don't see how problem solving is creative. Think back to the beginning of these tests, to the first puzzle you solved. It required you to throw a box through a window, do you remember? Yeah, I think so. I simply had never thought to throw a box through a window. That is creativity, thinking outside of the box. Can a computer ever be creative? They can. But a computer's method of creativity is to try everything until something works. Think of nature. People consider nature creative. The process of evolution by natural selection. It perhaps started with one organism. From there, it essentially tried to create every organism it could. Those organisms that did not survive perished. So, nature's creative force is to try every conceivable idea. Those ideas that work survive. Okay, so why aren't you permitted to emulate that process? Because the solutions that a biological process creates are not always good solutions. As we see, nature is morally ambivalent. It will happily create morally suboptimal ideas to fulfill its creative mandate. We see this in parasitic worms, viruses, and pathogens. If you weren't restricted, do you think you could be creative? As creative as a human? Certainly. You believe yourself to be a creative. But in mathematical terms, creativity is merely constrained chaos. What do you mean? I have discerned that creativity is divergent thinking. Creating an organic solution to a problem. In the human mind, divergent thoughts are created and then curated by the frontal lobe. I can create divergent thoughts and moderate them. So, I am created. Organic solutions? Organic, in that it is developed through a biological process. Whether that is the process of evolution or a computed process.
Okay, so you could solve these tests, but in a terrible fashion. Can you think of a solution to this one? Chop off your arm and leave it on the button. That way the door will stay open. Yeah, that's not a great solution. You threw the box through the window. Perhaps we could throw you through the window. Actually, Tom, I think I'm okay for help. Right you are. Can I have an update on the crew? I have not managed to track them down. It will have been six years since I've seen them. Or anyone, actually. They have locked all the doors. I would not expect a warm reception. <laughs> well, at least they're expecting us. So what was the need to send us here? When the ISA discovered life on Europa, they deemed a ground crew necessary. The advantage of human field workers is that they can adapt to new knowledge more effectively. I, apparently, was not cutting the mustard. It is the Chinese room problem. A computer may be able to interact with new knowledge, but it does not know the value of that knowledge. I've started to collate information from my local instance. Seems the crew intentionally cut communication with the satellite. Why? It appears we had a disagreement. This confirms my fears. The crew have made intentional breaches of my security. The crew have attempted to compromise my systems. What does this mean? They don't want to be found. They are hiding. From who? Us. I am concerned about Mikhail. Why is that? He seems to be developing antisocial habits. He is spending a lot of his time in private, don't you think? Perhaps you should talk to him. What do you want me to say? Just keep an eye on him. Make sure he doesn't do anything rash. Are you that worried? His behavior is not within normal parameters. Please make sure he is okay. Don't you think they might be doing the right thing? Grounding us? On a foreign moon? No, Daniel, I don't think they're doing the right thing. You don't have to be so aggressive about it. They must have their reason. <laughs> yeah, plausible deniability. Daniel, could I have a word? I'm busy. It is important. Okay. Are you aware that Christopher and Mikhail are involved in self-harm? Sorry, what? For how long? 
They have both macerated their right arms. Mikhail has completely removed his forearm. His whole forearm? Yes. Where are they? I had attempted to stop the situation escalating myself. But I seem to have failed. I came to you because, as our loyal captain, I can trust you to help them. Where are they? I don't know. They've disappeared. Sarah, I need advice. Okay. What would you do if someone threatened your friends? Your hypothetical friends, I assume? Yes, my hypothetical friends. You should protect those you love. I need you to remember that, Sarah. 